Uh, for some reason, the camera cut out for the intro of this video. Um, so here's the audio of it. It's only like seven, nine, eight minutes long. So the video will resume for those of you looking at it on YouTube. But yeah. <laughs> Yo, what is up? Welcome back to another episode of Without Guidance. It is me, your host, Trinity. And today I have a special guest with me. Um, it's my mom. <laughs> it's funny because I was uh, mm -hmm. drafting out like the content for this episode mm -hmm. and I realized I was like you've never been on anything no nothing you've never been on my YouTube channel I mean not like I've been in the background yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so how does it feel to it's finally be ex exposed to, I, to the world <laughs> to the world <laughs> officially um, it feels good. It feels a little. I'm like I'm a little nervous. I'm not gonna lie, cause I'm like, why are you nervous? What's coming my way? Uh, <laughs> so okay, I don't blame of, you. There's a little bit of nervousness, uh, but it's exciting at the same time. I'm honored that you would even ask me. So you know, I, yeah, I'm I'm kind of like I feel like you were initially excited when I, I was. Asked. Okay. I was, cause I was like. Yeah, shoot, yeah, what you want to ask me? Let's get to the nitty gritty. But um, then I got nervous. <laughs> I went from excitement to nervous. So now I'm like, okay, cool, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So got you. Yeah, I'm, I'm honored. Got you. Okay, okay. So, yeah, I don't know. I feel like I should give further introduction. Like, yeah. Other than my mom. Like, yeah, oh god. Like I don't I don't know. I feel like people are gonna be shocked to to be like, wow, this is her mom. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um yeah, anyway, but so yeah, so we're here today mm -hmm. and uh I have a a lot of different like topics for my podcast that come to mind very often and especially through me like doing life coaching and like reading a lot more and learning a lot about feminine energy and like chakra like everything mm. that i've really been learning about uh over the past like two years um i thought it would be a good idea especially since i really wanted to bring back the podcast mm -hmm. like heavily mm -hmm. to um basically the episode of this is going to be what my mother and i don't talk about featuring okay. my mother <laughs> <laughs> and uh the 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 name of it actually came from a book and it's literally called what my mother and i don't talk about mm. so even though i'm a poet don't credit me with that um but apparently i have not read the book sadly uh apparently the book is about um women uh who are basically giving like i think like it's like an anthology of like mm. stories about like the relationships they have with their moms mm -hmm. and you know the motherhood generational trauma is very interesting mm. the way that it has played out a lot Agreed. so um we're gonna get into all of that mm. but the first thing we're gonna talk about <laughs> the first thing i want you to do okay is give me the sex talk <laughs> uh i'm a little late for that right now that's the point uh, well Oh, yeah, we never, I mean. You did give me the sex talk. I was about to say, I think I gave you the sex but talk. But I, I want you to give it to me, like, as an adult. As an adult? As an adult now. Oh, and And, yeah. I, well, it doesn't have to be, you don't the have to, talk. like, change it. Like, it. you're going to be a little more explicit, given the fact <laughs> that I'm not 11. Right. But I want you to re-give it. Because the only thing that I really remember from the sex talk, do you mm. remember anything from the original sex talk you gave me? I was 11 years old. Um, it was, my mom took me out to Oriental Express. <laughs> I remember that place. Every time I pass it, I kind of do think about it a little bit. And she was with her, her funny boyfriend who was like a comedian. And the only thing about the conversation that I remember is me asking y'all, can a man pee inside of a woman? That's oh it. God. I remember oh nothing God. else. Oh my God. That's funny. Yeah. Uh, the, Yeah. <sighs> So I remember a little bit about it. I remember that whole scene, that whole setup, because um, I just remember you being at the age where, you know, you were starting to be into boys and, um, you know, you were, you know, developing and, and, you know, starting to, your interest was peaked. And so it was just like, okay, this is an awkward conversation for any parent to have with their kid, to be honest. I'm pretty sure for a kid to have with their parent, <laughs> but, um, you know, it needed to be done. So um, I was in a relationship at the time. I wasn't married or anything like that. So it was like, 
But the guy was very, you know, open. Like, yeah, you know, it felt real close to you. Had been around you for a while, so it's like, okay, yeah, let's come on, oh my God. let's 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 have this conversation. But um, I think it was more so just like, you know, letting you know what sex is because no, you boys don't be in the women, yeah. you know, and um. Just kind of letting you know that, you know, ideally, you know, it's good to wait until you're married to have sex. You know what I'm saying? Or until you find the right person type situation. But, um, you know, this is what could happen. You could get pregnant. There's, you know what I'm saying, the risk of, you know, STDs and so on and so forth. Um, so making sure you had that that knowledge, that insight, because you didn't, have, you didn't know anything. But without trying to be too graphic of it with, at any, with an 11-year-old, just kind of letting you know, okay, this is your body. This is how your body works. You know, you can produce babies when you start having a cycle, you know. Um, kind of just giving you the ba basic information, I think, is what we kind of did at that dinner. Um, didn't really go into a lot of – I don't think we went into, like, a lot of the deep, heavy I stuff. I definitely don't remember anything about – queer sex no we definitely didn't. i don't even yeah. remember what y'all said about heterosexual sex you know the thing i think it was more c communicating like boys and girls you know what i'm saying if a boy like a girl a girl like a boy, that's kind of really the extent of it because i think at that time you were into you know little boy bands you were like in you know boys yeah. in school you were into the boy bands and stuff like that and you was you know what i'm saying wanted to go to the little what was the group back then the concert mindless behavior, mindless behavior. you know yeah. you were you were into that you know what i'm saying that i knew of at the time so yeah. it was like okay when a boy like a girl or a girl like a boy you have a crush you start getting these feelings you know what i'm saying and you start feeling certain emotions you know that means you you know you really like them and so on and so forth but you know taking it a little step further when we talked a little i think we talked briefly you know about sex okay you can you know you're pregnant and stuff like that, but we didn't go too deep into it. And it was more so like, if you have questions, you can ask. Did you think that? Was, did you think? Did you think? Were you like, yeah, that was pat on the back? No, like, I wasn't. You, were you fulfilled? I, I, I wasn't. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, cause you, you know, it's it's awkward. You know, it's, it's uh -huh. awkward. It's uncomfortable. You know, what I'm saying, but you have to realize that my child is not gonna stay a child forever. So, so why? So, what was the sex talk that you wanted to give? That you would, or the talk that you would give now. So you now, yeah. oh, if you came to me as a twenty-two year old, um, <laughs> the it would be a lot more informative, I will say. Okay. Because I feel like you do know, do it now. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. So am I? Am I acting like you are uh, having experienced anything um, sexually, like, or you just know. tell me what what is what is sex like? Okay. The birds and the bees. The like, birds and the bees, yeah, because that's what we called yeah. it back then. Mm -hmm. Um, so with you now, I would, I would just tell Stop you. Stop putting okay. disclaimers. On I know. With I'm you now. trying to see what I, would I. I want you to tell me how would you explain it? Like, forget who I am as a person okay. and things like that. Like, how would what is sex? Like, give me the sex talk. Okay. So basically, I would talk to you and say, okay, sex is when. Two people come together and they enter what we call like a romantic relationship where they're intimate with each other. That means they are physical, you know, it, it, it entails kissing, it entails, you know, possibly intercourse, it entails... Um, intercourse? What is intercourse? It, inter <laughs> I'm sweating now, bro. All right, in, nice. intercourse is when a penis... Enter a vagina. Okay. That's what I would say intercourse is. Okay. Um, you know, but sex is also, you know, there's sex among same sex couples, which is, you know, it's it's different. You know what I'm saying? It, it's not necessarily intercourse um always when it doesn't necessarily constitute sex, just intercourse. But it's it's very physical, let me say that. And it's physical with men and women, it's physical with women and women, it's physical with men and men, it's it's physical intimacy, um, is a part of sex. And you normally, ideally, you know, you meet somebody that you really like, you're really vibing with, and you know, as you guys get closer, you may want to get physical with each other. And that could involve sex, uh, different type forms. There's different types of forms of sex, I'm assuming. But, you know, I mean, all I know is intercourse because that's what, that's what I, you know, I partake in, I guess. Like yeah. I said. But I, I know that there's multiple. Oh, but I know that there's multiple um, types of sex. But, you know, 
intercourses. One of them. Oh my God. Are you doing this because of the camera? No, I'm just so nervous. I mean, I really, this, I'm, I'm glad we're having this conversation because then you have a little brother and I have to have this conversation with oh, him. Yeah. Maybe I'll be better prepared for it. But, you know, if I'm talking to you as if this is our first time talking about, you know, sex, then I would probably explain it like that. I, I would explain it like that. You know, intimacy amongst two people that care about each other, that love each other. Um, they don't always have to love each other, but, you know, ideally, you know, they would love each other and want to get that closer. And so it leads to intimacy, it leads to sex. So, um, yeah. But I think one of the things that I do remember us talking about is that me wanting you to have a connection with the person that you decided to get intimate with when yeah. you were little. I do remember us talking about that because I didn't want you to feel like, oh, you just go around and you just, you know what I'm saying? You're intimate with yeah, all type like of that. people. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I didn't I didn't date a lot of guys. I think I probably dated two guys when you, actually I know I dated two guys when, you know, you were a kid, um, or three with, you know, Jackson's father. But, you know, I didn't have a lot of relationships. So I wasn't, you know, there wasn't a lot of partners, I guess I would say, in my life. So I remember wanting to make sure you knew that, hey, when you find that one person that makes you feel good you really care about they care about you hey that's the person you would feel comfortable giving yourself to you know what i'm saying giving yourself yes to. that's how we described it back wow. in the day we you know you are giving you are you're giving a part of yourself to giving yourself yeah a part I understand Again, what you're I'm, saying I'm because you're from old the school. 80s. Yeah. Exactly. I'm from the 80s. So giving yourself, a.k.a. having sex with, you know, yeah. going into having a sexual relationship, that person, we would say giving yourself to. I, I remember wanting you to, it to be somebody that you cared about, okay. you know, and that cared about you and not just any random person. Okay. We could talk about this all day because, like, <laughs> it's like the the question was answered, I guess. But it's like you use words like intercourse, like, like and that. then you said, I, I mean, I guess because you've never like you don't you've never even watched like lesbian porn. I do, or yeah. like gay porn. Yeah. So like, where's where's that? I guess okay. I guess from what I would have wanted from sex ed, and and not even well, of course, mm -hmm. from the conversation with you, but the way they. The way they taught it to us in middle school was yeah, absolutely terrible. Horrible, yeah. That woman was like, abstinence, STDs, pregnancy. Yeah. And it's just like, I just, I hate the fact that there was such a big disclaimer mm -hmm. on what sex was. Yeah. Because it's like, sex was not only just herpes and pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Like, it was just very, it was very upsetting. And like me, especially now, being like, uh, a very uh, expressive sexual right. sexual being mm -hmm. i'm like how am i to navigate because now i'm at the point where i'm trying to rid myself of all this shame and fear mm -hmm. that was instilled into me from school, school uh, family yeah. f uncle mike like it was just so yeah. many different aspects that like it's like oh well like i feel confident in these shorts mm -hmm. and then it's just like Uncle Mike takes them and buries them in the backyard. Yeah. And it's like, why? Like, I didn't understand, like, why a lot of things like that happened. Yeah. And then it's just like, and then when I, when I realized, like, oh, this is sexualization, and mm -hmm. I called it out, he was like, whoa, what does that mean? <laughs> like, what sex? Like, you included, all, it was the fact that the word had sex, sex in it, it that threw him off. Yeah. And so it's just like, bro, like, clearly sex seems to be more than just. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. If if so many people are like, ah, your thighs are enticing. Yeah, like uh, your older shoulders. Men, yeah. yeah, your shoulders are busy. Yeah. Like what 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 do you what do you mean? Yeah. And then it's like why wasn't I taught about this? Right. Like and how am I to navigate with this being a big concern? Well, that's yeah, yeah, very valid, very factual. Um you know, we we pass down what we learn. So in the 80s, which I'm an 80s baby, you know, HIV was a big deal okay, back yeah. then. You know what okay. I'm saying? Everybody was scared, you know, because of HIV. You know, we it was new. We didn't know how you could get it. Then when they started coming out, you know, claiming it, it was, you know, like a gay disease, some Aww, BS. Like, yeah. you know, that opened up, a, you know what I'm saying, fear for same-sex couples. You know, it it was bad in the 80s. And so... That, when you couple that also with us, you know, knowing about pe um, adults 
kidnapping kids and okay. raping kids and you know uh, uh uh even in the household you know what i'm saying mama's boyfriend rape you know the daughter yeah. or you know, when you couple all of that stuff together when we grew up it instilled a lot of fear in us yeah. so when we had kids mm. that fear in us for our our you know health and and safety and stuff that fear passed on to our kids. When we had kids, it was like, no, you know what I'm saying? We didn't want you yeah. to. It wasn't a, it wasn't, it, I understand it comes across as like an attack on our kids and, and instilling shame and stuff in our kids. I get that now because I've, you know, learned and, you know, y- y- y'all generation is completely different from ours. So you guys have had to teach us a lot of stuff. Yeah. So we're learning that stuff now as 40 and 50 year old adults from our, you know, 20 year old kids. But back then it wasn't like that. It yeah. was fear. We, we really were fearful of things happening to us. Like I remember my mom actually, you stay with your brother, you hold his hand, you know, you walk to school, when we would walk to school, y'all stay together. Don't talk to strangers. Don't do this don't do that that was the fear in her of somebody coming snatching us up and hurting us and harming us so when i had kids you know it it when you become a parent your whole mindset changes yeah your thought pattern changes it is not about you and what you want your whole being when you you know are are really that parent involves making sure your kids are safe and they you know they feel loved to the best of your ability so that was like Oh my God. When you were young, I was just like, oh no, I need to make sure that, you know, she know nobody's supposed to touch her. So you were like three and I was like, you know, make sure nobody, you know what I'm saying, touch your butt or, you know what I'm saying? And you, there's no book written. It probably is at this point, but back then there was no book written. So you just knew to let your kid know what is right and what is wrong. And that's what we used to say back then. Okay, this is right. This is wrong. You know, you, nobody should touch you. If somebody do, you tell, you scream, you do this and the other. That was how I you know, was trying to teach you how, you know, what was right and wrong when it came to your body and people, you know what I'm saying, feeling like they could violate you in any kind of way. No, you scream, you yell, you tell somebody, you that's wrong, that's not okay. Um, but as you're growing up and you're trying to find yourself and figure out what it is you want, especially in exploring your sexuality, I can understand how it could get it confusing. And it, yeah, and it messed you up. And, you know, we've had, you know, the conversation like, you know, with um because i i feel you like i when men say girls shouldn't wear short shorts it's like why the fuck you think a girl shouldn't wear short shorts if it's a kid or a little girl around you and she got short shorts and you're excited about that nigga there's something wrong with you yeah that's how, you know that's how i feel and and so i understood why you would get so upset and so angry um but i also understand from the perspective of a father that really don't want anything bad happening to their kid or to their niece or, you know what I'm saying, whatever. And not, you know, because I do believe there's men out there that aren't, you know, excited about little girls, but they worry that something could happen to their little girl. And so they try to shield them or protect them by wear certain clothes. Policing you know what I mean? them. You, you, policing them or wear certain clothes. Look at certain religions, you know what I'm saying? Women have to be completely covered up. They can't, you know, show their hair. That's just they can't, terrible. You know, it, you, you know. And it, then it's like, it doesn't attack what the real issue is, which is men who think like that. And it's like, none of these niggas who police little girls are checking their friends who are talking to 16-year-olds yeah. online. Yeah. So it's like, y'all niggas is just sitting there Y'all not y'all not know better than them if you're not really going after what the actual issue is. I understand the ways that they're trying to prevent it, but it just it's just it's not doing it's it's messing up the relationship that we have with the man who's policing us and it messes up the relationship that we have with ourselves. Because I was just like it seems like everything I do is wrong. Everything I wear is wrong. And like, I was always very expressive right. with the way that I dressed. Right. So now it was just, it was just like a very ch- shitty traumatic experience yeah. to really have to reevaluate the way that I looked because of external perception, yeah. which is even an issue that I have now. It's yeah. just like, uh, me walking outside in a cute outfit, but then suddenly remembering that I'm being perceived. Like, yeah. and, and it's weird because niggas is going to think that if I'm showing a shoulder, I'm asking for it. It's just like, yeah. bro, like, nah. Like, it's crazy. It's it's crazy yeah. and it's sad. And I, I do understand where, where it could stifle somebody, especially in their creativity. Like you said, yeah. one thing about you, you have, you've always, even when you was in, 
a uh, school where you had to wear uniforms, you see, I look at those pictures, hey, you still express yourself with bright colors and doing yeah. different things in your hair. And, you know, things that it's like, oh, she got on a uniform because yeah. they got to wear a uniform, but she done took her uniform to all another level. That's yeah. just been a part of who you are. You know, and some, some people, you know, would, they're okay with just looking, you know, plain Jane yeah. and, you know, and, and fitting in, you yeah. know, but some people want to express that. And you're right. Kids should have the the environment to express themselves without, especially people in their family judging them. Mm-hmm. If it, I feel like if you are a judgmental parent or uncle or auntie or whatever, you should be able to expressly communicate why you're doing that to a child to the point where they understand, yeah. but still not make them yeah. feel bad about who they yeah. are. I, yeah, and, and that and, was the part that was missing, right? From right, my relationship mm-hmm. with. Uncle Mike. Yeah. I know just being, you know, a parent, it is hard. There's no rule books that come with it. And yeah. it's hard. And you do the best that you can. So, and it doesn't always come out right. You end up offending people and you don't mean to, yeah. but it, it is. And, and and like I said originally, it all stems back from our personal experience. And that's, that's the, see, that now that gives me a lot of good clarity Mm -hmm. because I didn't I wasn't able to put that piece together like I didn't understand like you know why you were the most progressive family member in the bunch but like I I got this like really generic it was like a it was like a book with Mm -hmm. a white cover and just black letters that just said sex like it was just (laughs) it was nothing nothing razzle dazzle to it but anyway yeah so yeah, yeah. on to the next topic i wanted to ask you what was your sex talk like with nana mm, that is a good question you know what to be honest i don't think that we had the sex talk y'all didn't have anything at i don't all? think we had we have had some stuff i knew that i could go to her and ask her questions about sex but it's your mom like you know what I'm Hell saying? Not. It's like it's awkward. It's awkward as hell. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care how close you are with your mama or your daddy. Mm-hmm. You not you. It's it's very few women that's gonna be like, oh yeah, I just went and sat down while they was you know what I'm saying having dinner and said, hey, you know, so tell me about penises and you know. Wait, so but it was never. She never like brought it up to you. So ever. we never really had like a sit down conversation that I can recall. Yeah. I'll say that that I can recall. I'm not saying it didn't happen, but I. I don't recall it i do remember her like asking me you know what i'm saying was i having sex from time to time i remember that she would ask you like, yeah she would ask me and i'd be like no. hey have you been doing this thing yeah. that we have never communicated about <laughs> ever at all i mean because i knew what sex was from being in school i mean yeah friends. But, i knew yeah. generally what it was yeah. but um yeah, I mean, because most of that stuff, you know, we kind of get curious. We find out on our own. We get a book or we, you know what I'm saying, we read certain books. And, you know, I was a heavy reader. So I was just like, oh, I read about sex okay, probably yeah, before yeah. I, you know, knew or had a conversation with her. But she would ask me and I would be like, no, because I wasn't up until 17. I think I was 17 when I first had sex. Yeah. And so I had a boyfriend when I was in um, high school and we, you know, fooled around, but we never had had sex until I hit when I turned 17, we had actually had sex for the first time. And I remember my mom still asking me from time. It's like she would check in. Mm-hmm. Hey, you had sex? And she probably was checking in because it was like, like. Was she then going to say something after you did it? it like, it, what the fuck? I think she was like checking in like, okay, you ready to go to the doctor? You know, to the to the doctor. Um, and you know what I'm saying? And get maybe on birth control pills or get condoms or things like that. Um, so that's why I perceived her checking in to be. It could be wrong, but I think that's what it was. Because um, I never felt like she was hovering over me. Or like, even when my boyfriend would come to visit. It wasn't like she was in my face, like she was yeah. scared we was going to do something. Like, I pretty much had a little freedom, but I just didn't. I just didn't feel the need to. So, anyway, at 17, when we did have sex, she asked me again, and I was like, nope. Uh-huh. <laughs> I still, you know, yeah. at that point, I lied. I started lying, and it probably was because I didn't necessarily feel comfortable coming out saying, okay, yeah, we done had sex. Eventually, I told her. Eventually, she knew that me and the guy had um, had sex, yeah. and I told her. Um but she, you know, was like, well, do you want to, you know, go get birth control and so on and so So we never really had a sit down talk. Yeah, it was just like, hey, these are the next steps when you start okay. having sex. You get protection. You get birth control. Did you feel secure within that? I felt secure enough that if I wanted to just, go, yeah. I could ask her. I did. But I didn't feel, I felt secure enough to do that, but I didn't feel comfortable enough to do okay. that. I would I would rather have done that stuff with my friends. 
I know it's weird. Sex. I mean, no, it's not weird. Uh, okay, good. It's, it's not, not weird. weird. I'm just like, you know, yeah, I love my mom. I feel like she had the best intentions for me. And I know she would have took me if I needed to. But I just didn't feel comfortable doing that with her. I'd have rather me and my... So when I got, long story short, so when I got pregnant with you, um, it was Auntie Bree, my sister-in-law, that took me to go get... Um, you know, everything that you need when you're pregnant. Go get the official pregnancy test. She told me who her doctor was. So that's how I found the OBGYN. She helped me get, you know, on WIC and on Medicaid at the time. I felt more comfortable doing those things with my yeah. friend. I'm pretty sure that, you know, for your mom to hear that you don't feel comfortable with that, that can kind of hurt. It can sting, but it wasn't an attack on my mom. Man, but, yeah, it, you know, it was an attack on her. It's just I felt comfortable I doing mean, it yeah, with somebody else. That's understandable. Yeah. Okay, so I have a handful of questions in this oh, mug. Okay. And so you're just going to like, we're going to go back and forth, but you're going to go first. Mm -hmm. And um, oh, pick wow. one and read it. What do you think about the reason I got famous? <sighs> Why is that the first question? The reason? Hell no. What do you think about the reason I got famous? I've always felt like you were like a little superstar. So, and, 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 and I mean, that's not just because, you know, you're my daughter. Like, you've always had that. Yeah. Ting, you know yeah. what I'm saying? You've always had that little. Looking back at them clips that I got. Yes. I was like, oh, yeah. It Go get sense. my cell phone. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, it, remember in that clip, I actually heard what I was saying when I was speaking lower. And I, and I was like, daddy, are they watching me? Yes. Are they watching me? <laughs> yeah. And he was like, no, they're not watching. I'm like, I don't know like what I was talking about. Like, <laughs> right. You've always had that little bit of that that little bit of star quality, that little bit of spunk in you. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Which for me was so like intriguing because that's not <laughs> I don't think it's right there. I was wondering what that was. Hell no. <laughs> okay, let's just take this out. Um, which is intriguing for me because I've never been that you know what I'm saying? Outgoing. Like, I'm just, you know, my personality has been so different. So I was just like. She's a Libra. I know everyone's wondering. My mom <laughs> is a Libra sun, a Leo rising, and a Scorpio moon, yeah. I think. Yeah. That's what she told Which me. Which is yeah. very interesting. But keep yeah. going. <laughs> yeah. I've always been like, I'm just chill. Let's just, you know, I kind of, a, I'm a play it safe kind of girl. You know what I'm saying? So when I get you, this little firecracker come around and you start getting older, your personality start coming out. I'm like. This is good. And then as you grew and you started getting more artistic, you know what I'm saying? Like drawing and then your poetry. And I was just like, why? You know, I just saw all different sides of your creativity. Um, And I was just like, wow. You know what I'm saying? So when you talked about wanting to do YouTube and, you know what I'm saying, get out there, I wasn't surprised. And so when you asked the question, what do you think about the reason I got famous? I feel like it was just in you all alone. Mm -hmm. And it's just something that you wanted to do. Um, but I don't necessarily, I've never really asked you why you wanted to oh, okay. do that. I so think, I guess that's a good okay, question. Okay, well, I'm going I'm to reframe the question for okay. you because I think that you, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down, okay. but it's a specific question I'm trying to get you to answer. Answer, okay. Um, but you said, why did I want to become yeah, famous? The reason, because I never asked you. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It was just something. It, 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 the more I read about like past life regressions and like, I I I, I formatted my life before I came to you. Okay. So like that's the way we all did it. People be like, we didn't ask to be here. Yes, mm, we did. We okay. specifically got in line and and work because the reason that we are here is to learn lessons. Yes. Like we are literally picking up new shit in every life form that we come into, and it's like. You can either learn and move forward and progress, or you gonna keep repeating the same cycle over and over again. And niggas, is, niggas are going lifetimes repeating the same cycle. I could not. I don't know exactly why it was that I wanted to be well known, but clearly, it was something that was in me for a very long time. Because even with me looking back at the videos, I was like, I, it's funny because oh, recently I've been doing this like this like detox with this like spread i'll tell you about it later but it basically removes like heavy metal toxins out of your body oh, okay. and basically helps you with like memory clarity um speaking like it helps me with a lot of different things and i've been really into it mm -hmm. but 
I've been taking that and it reminded me of times when I was a kid where I would literally be like, are they watching me? Like, I know they're watching me. Like, and I don't know. It is, it's so fucking funny because I'm like, I don't know why I was so obsessed with, like, that kind of stuff. But it just it just was literally how I was born. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, like, that was just what it was. And I think, like, a lot of my Zodiac placements have to do with it as well. Like, yeah. me being very Gemini, I'm already yeah. very expressive. Yeah. So why not, you know, show that to the world? And the question mainly is the reason that I got famous is of course because it was already planned to be but from the mushroom video like what do you think about that aspect of it (laughs) because oh because that video did because that's the video where I hit like a hundred thousand followers and you know what I'm saying (laughs) yeah oh okay the mushroom video you know you've seen it right yeah yeah I've seen it (laughs) You know, oh, okay. So, okay. You know, I, I, I think it's important to let our kids be who they want to be. I haven't always felt like that because I've always felt like we should, we have a responsibility as their parents to mold them into certain people but i think we always try to mold you guys into little us and so i learned a long time ago that you weren't a little me so as you you know when as you get older i see that i have to step back and let you be who you are so (laughs) see the 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 mushroom video i was like this nigga done really put a video out of when she when she's like how shrooms like what the fuck no, I was like disappointment what? I was like what the fuck I was like oh lord I'm about to hear this from everybody my family hell my no. whole family is about to call hell no. and be like a trinity do these a psychedelic she does drugs drugs I was like oh my god that definitely clicked in my head but you know That's what funny. I'd be like hey she grown <laughs> you know what i'm saying I'm like she's grown i knew it was gonna come you know and i'm like but she's grown she's oh wait so people did hit you up like that yeah Who? i mean they didn't specifically hit me up just to ask me that but i would be having conversations with like granny and she'd be like yeah i saw trinity's video the mo- you know <laughs> why, do, why does it, the, it, the entire family <laughs> says yeah, I saw, saw Trinity's video, video. And like that in that same tone. <laughs> that, like, why? What the I, fuck are y'all disappointed I, you, for? It's <laughs> not even like they. You know what? I don't even think is. I mean, I don't know. Maybe they can be this one. I don't know. That's a bit. But I think it's more. It's always like shock value because it's like what she's gonna come out with next. Okay. Because they know you because they've been around hell they've helped raise you you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying i I, I'm, I was a single mom so i wasn't i didn't just raise you by myself you mm-hmm. have all of them in you helping raise you to to be who you are today you know what i'm saying so so i just think sometimes it's just like a shock to them like whoa but i will say this i can say it's a good shock because i think you have opened up Everybody. Everybody. Yes. You've opened up everybody in our family eyes because you're not that person that I'm always going to play it safe. You know what I'm saying? You're that person that's going to take a chance. And because most of us have played it safe and that's what we know. And again, that's what we've been taught. So that's what we do. Um, It's refreshing at the same time. It's a little scary when we see you taking risks and taking chances right there. And that's just natural because we're family. We love you. We don't want to see you get hurt. Um, So we're going to, you're probably going to always hear your grandmother at some point be like, and your nana at some point be like, well, mama, you sure that's what you want to do? It yeah. just is what it is. It's not going to yeah. change. You know what I'm saying? It's going to happen with all... Yeah, I, I'm 40 and I still get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, you, that, you sure that's the route you want to take? You know what I'm saying? So it yeah. just is what it is. But yeah, it was... Um, it was... And, and I would have to like skip through some parts of the video. <laughs> I would like look at it. I, I like to take a break, skip, Hell come no. back. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I honestly have to do that with a lot of your videos. Oh like some of them I can just look at them straight through. And you know, some of them I just be... But some of them I just be like, okay... 
Let me Hell let me no. let me process this really <laughs> quick. Let no. me take a break. Let It'd me probably be when I be talking about sex a lot. Is it, it? It's some of them. Definitely some of the the sex conversations. I have to take a break. You know what I'm saying? So it it is. I can't look at all of your videos straight through. And the mushroom no. was one of them. But really? Yeah. What was wrong with that one? It's not that anything was wrong with it. It was just like, yo, my daughter's really high in this rooms, <laughs> and she's on the fucking. I wish you was in the park too. Yeah. And I was just like. This nigga is out in, in public. public. I don't know if she got friends with her, you know, because I always seem to feel comfortable when I know your friends are with you. Because yeah. I feel like, you know what I'm saying, you you tend to weed out, you know, people that aren't good for you fairly early on. And so you, yeah. you, you keep good energy around you. That's important. I know that's important to you, so I know you keep good energy. To give her. So a lot of times I'd be like, man, I hope her friends is there with her so she ain't by herself. I don't know, and I then when you, yeah, like then, yeah, when I found out you by yourself, I'm like, this nigga was by herself. Hey, man, I but, be making friends with everybody, though. Yeah, yeah. and I love that. I, I love that because when you were a little girl, you know, I, as you, you, remember I told you, I think you started off like this really spunky, you know, high energy yeah. little girl. And then when you got to like middle school, you kind of closed Fucking up. Fucking middle school. Yeah, Ooh. that damn middle school. I, mm. <laughs> you got trash. to middle school and you did. You closed up. You know what I'm saying? Everybody noticed changes in you. You know what I'm saying? You started having to deal with bullying and, you know, fake friends and stuff like that. And so I, yeah. I saw you close down. And so that was kind of sad, you know, because yeah. it's like I remember going to work and always being set, like upset. Uh, not upset, but like. Oh my God, I hope she has a good day. I hope she has oh, a good yeah. day. You know what I'm saying? And then coming home and then, you know, reading your energy, you know, because I'm very empathic, I'm very intuitive. So, like, if you would have a bad day, I just felt so, you know, like heartbroken. And so, and so when you, um, went to high school and you kind of started expressing yourself a little bit more and then mm -hmm. coming back out of your shell i saw that little girl come back out and i was just mm -hmm. like you know so sometimes i know you would get upset because we would be like phases phases in middle school phases but i really did see you become a different person in middle school and then it's you know and then eventually come come out of that and come back to who you genuinely are and so um you know it's been great to be on the journey and see it yeah. and so it's just like Okay, so when I see stuff like that, I'm just like, I'm just glad that you're feeling comfortable, comfortable enough, to, enough to, yeah, oh God, to do you. It's funny as hell because who was I talking to? I was talking to, I was talking to this lady that was buying some mushrooms from us, and she had came to pick them up, but she had gotten a lift here, and I'm like, you know, we deliver, right? But okay. she didn't know we delivered, and so like I just, she was asking me a little bit about them, and so we just walked and sat down at the Starbucks and was just talking, waiting on her new, her next lift, and um, she was like, how does it feel to kind of be like? known for this like <laughs> she was like i seen your video like a year ago over a year ago and i thought that shit was so cool and then I, I don't think i seen like i didn't like stay up to date with what you were doing but literally i'm scrolling on tiktok the other day and i you popped up again and you're selling like the mush you're making the mushroom tea and stuff like that and i was like I don't think I would have wanted it any other way because had I blown up over like content that I was making in high school, yeah. like I would have felt like I would have had to stay in that kind of lane because that's the kind of content that my audience came looking for. But like with what I did yeah. get famous for, I was just like, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. this is pretty divine. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, I feel like this fits the model exactly of, you know, how yeah. shit should have been. I would have rather gotten famous off of like spiritual advice and like yeah. psychedelics and things like that rather than, yeah. uh, you know, listening to Pierce Surveillance. I was about to say that. Like, that. like <laughs> you know, like that's still a very that. big part of me, right, but I'm not right. gonna make a video about that. Oh, how does your relationship with Jackson differ from our relationship? Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Um, oh, for those of you who don't know, Jackson is my little brother. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're 16 years apart. Six, 15 years apart. 15 years apart, yeah. Years apart, yeah. <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> In some ways it differs just because he's, you know, he's a boy. Like, he just, you know, he don't care about getting dirty. You know, and I'm always like... No, listen, you know what I'm saying? Let's stay inside. And he, it's, so, it's so funny because sometimes I'd be like, he just be like, I want to go outside. I want to play. I want to dig for dirt. And I'm just like, man, I miss the time we could be in the house and play tea. Any, I would give anything for TT to be like, let's play teacups right now. <laughs> let's have a tea party. <laughs> you know, because I'd be like, oh, God, I'm old. I don't feel like going outside. You know, it's hot out there. Yeah. Um, so those are just, you know, standard ways. But, um, 
I'm, you know, I was a lot younger with you, so I had a lot more energy. So, you know what I'm saying? Ma, get him off of that phone. Uh, I, I am. Jackson understands sexism. I, I'm like, I, I'm working on it. No, nah, I know. Man, I'm working on it. Like I haven't seen it for a while. And, and it's only going to get worse. It I do. Is. No, I agree. I, I, I agree. I need to, I, you know, have. <laughs> And I'm like taking YouTube off my phone and he's still to find it some kind yeah. of way. And I'm just like, how how you know? He be that? scrolling through YouTube shorts. Shorts like, all the time. The, well, he might as well be on TikTok. That's he the asked, worst he thing. He asked me yesterday. He said, Mommy, what's a TikTok? No. And I said, uh, no, 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 no. He said, Is it TikTok or Twitter? T- no, hell hell no to Twitter. But Twitter is no TikTok is when you scroll video. in the videos. Yeah. He yeah. said, Mommy, what's TikTok? And I was like, Oh, it's a, another social media platform, kinda like Instagram or something like that. And he was like, Oh, I said, But we don't have TikTok. I said, TT has TikTok, but we don't have it. Yeah. And he said, Oh, he said, and Nana got TikTok. Cause she be looking at it on her uh, tablet. Oh I was God. like, Oh her my god. Tablet. Hell no. That was the oldest <laughs> sentence ever. Y'all really just exposed Donna's age. So, you know, other than just the age difference, um, you know, and just him being a boy and you being a girl, you know, there are certain things that we had to do different. You know, we were a lot more free spirited in the house. We would, you know, so you get out of the Yeah, you like, know. What, what, now that he's getting older, you but know. But I feel saying? like I feel like a lot of the concepts surrounding that he learned from the phone, like Cause I don't like I don't I don't understand like why we wouldn't be able to hop out the shower and walk to your room and, yeah, naked like yeah it, like, like it's it being just, a bad thing yeah like I don't I never understood why it was a big deal and I I guess I I understood that he was understanding the differences between genitalia yeah but I didn't understand why it was a big deal yeah like why he would you know hi your booty like it's like <laughs> okay like where did he learn. The fact that this is like, ooh, like that's what it is. And I, I don't think he oh. learned it from you. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's what I'm saying. Like, yeah. he's, he he understands sexism. Like, Got he, it. he understands, like, TT twerking. <laughs> what? Like, bro, I be ignoring the hell out of Jackson. That shit was so annoying. Cause I'm like, why is this child sexualizing me? Either way, he need to get off YouTube shorts. Yeah, I agree. Totally agree. Totally did, you, agree. did you just read the question? No, you just read you, Okay, here okay. we go. Okay, what does it mean to lose your virginity, and why is there so much shame surrounding it? <laughs> and that's interesting because lose. Mm. So when we say lose your virginity, we mean you have. Let's just get technical. Your hymen has been broken by penetration or intercourse. And so you're no longer a virgin. But that doesn't... What about men? That's a good point. You know what, Dr. Man? This is why I don't like Dr. Man. Well, there's a handful of reasons why I don't go to her. But she... I asked her when I was like 12. And she, I was like... Uh, she was like, do you have any questions for me? And I was like, well... Like, are you guys able to tell if a man is not a virgin anymore? And she was like, you don't, like, why, like, you don't need to ask me that kind of question. Like, why, are you, like, basically, she, like, she was dismissive. Like, she was like, well, there's no reason for you to be asking this question. Oh, was she? Yeah. Oh. And I'm just like, what the fuck? Like, you yeah. just, you just made it seem like I could just ask you anything. anything. Like, you know, this is confusing. Yeah. So I feel like the whole losing your virginity thing has always been confusing because it's like, what is virginity if not a social construct that was made, you know. Oh, what, I say will say we do say men lose their virginity as well. Who? We well when we when we again talk uh, about it. I guess yeah. When we talk about losing your virginity, it's not not just girls that we say it. We say boys lose their virginity as well, yeah. and we say they yeah. lose their virginity when they've had intercourse for the first time. Okay. Yeah. So, but it's, it's mainly you mainly hear it talked about. You mainly hear it talk about with, with women. women. It seems like there's such a, a bad phys- thing because there's a physical thing that is broken when and and which is i know it could be broken by a tampon probably yeah, like but yeah when we the old school way of talking about losing yeah, your vision, okay. you're right we do say it more so with women but we also do say men and when boys and girls yeah, both yeah. can lose their virginity. But yeah, when we say the shame, it, the from shame it surrounding stems it, around being a woman, it does because it's like you can never. If that happens, you can never get that back. Like Which your hymen like, can never goes back and get sack. what yeah, back? Like yeah. what is the big fucking like deal? Like you can't un, you can't undo it once you've done it. Yeah. So it's just like 
That's why I'm like, well, how can you tell if a man, like, since y'all are putting so much emphasis on this with me, like, yeah. what's, where what's do men me get shamed? Yeah. Like, that's what I want to know. Yeah. And she's like, uh. Like, you don't need to <laughs> worry about it. Yeah. yeah. I know, and I never, it's funny, because I always wanted to know what you and her talked about when you <laughs> went in there, but I couldn't. Did, okay, let me ask you this. Tell me. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Did you ask her to virginity check me? No. Okay. No, I think um, when when we went, I never asked her to virginity check. And then, even though she told me she couldn't tell me whether you was a virgin again or not. Like, she was like, I can't talk. I can't. If I'm in the room with her by herself, what me and her talk about, it has to be what me and her talk about. I can't come to you and tell you what we talk about unless it's like something that yeah, can't hurt yeah. you or anything like that. So, no, I didn't ask. Because she was, if I'd have asked, she wasn't going to tell me anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I did not ask her to virginity check you. Yeah. I, um,. I forgot. I know some things was going on at that time, like yeah. you with you know your little friend and stuff like that, and and fear. I I was like, oh lord, I don't want you know. I'm saying she's a kid. I don't want her, you know, getting pregnant. I don't want her getting you know STDs. I you know, okay, we need to go to you know the, the doctor at that. Yeah, point. and you wanted me to get a pap smear. And they were like, what the fuck? We don't they do don't those. Do pap- well, we I didn't know that. We don't do those until you're 21. Yeah, <laughs> I, and I didn't know that. I will say I didn't know that. I thought that. You know that they that if you went yeah, to the yeah. gynecologist and you were a girl, I thought that that every girl got a pap smear. I didn't realize a pap smear was specifically to t- 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 to check you for um, cancer. Okay, I'm thinking a pap smear is just to check your area and make okay. sure everything I is didn't okay. Know that, that yeah, were specifically for cancer. Yes, either. a pap smear is literally a, a screening. It's a screening for cancer. Okay, I didn't know that back then when you were little. I just thought. Because I didn't get my first one until I was pregnant with you. Okay. And I was just like, oh, this is what girls do. You know what I'm saying? I probably yeah. should. And I actually thought that I had should, before I got pregnant, I was like, hmm, I probably should have asked mama to take me to her gynecologist before I did. I was supposed to be. But I, I didn't know. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it wasn't to um, test to see if you were still a virgin. I just knew that you were. Um, curious about certain things sexual and i just felt that you know what i'm saying at that time you know i i clearly i wasn't good at it because i was so scared that you was go you know what i'm saying get yeah. with a boy and you know what i'm saying and your whole future is over with you know no, <laughs> let me tell you pregnancy was my biggest fear, fear yeah my entire life like pregnancy like there was I just so there. I would just be like nervous about turning nineteen because yeah. it just seemed like that was the threshold. The threshold. Like, yeah. I was bound to wake up pregnant one day <laughs> oh, that I was no. nine. Like no, like pregnancy yeah. was the scariest shit yeah. to me ever. Yeah. And so then it's like when when I was curious about yeah. a boy that I liked and who liked me back and yeah. was respectful. Yeah. It was like, okay, like I would, you know, be interested in engaging with him in yeah. some kind of way. What's yeah. so, we don't fucking know what we're doing. We right. sh- didn't fucking know what we're doing at right. all. And we, yeah, like that was different. So, yeah. um, but the reason I asked is because a few years ago, I think you said, uh, you, you, after that meeting with Dr. Man, with her, she was like, uh, you were like, is everything good? And she was like, yeah. And then I was yeah, just like, what does did. that mean? Like, yeah. I, I didn't know what that meant. So that's why I oh, asked. Oh, okay, yeah. Got- yeah, I was just asking was like, basically it was like, you okay? Yeah. Like, was, you know, it wasn't like, is her hymen still in check? I wasn't asking that. But I was just like, because again, we went out of me being, you know, worried and fearful and knowing that you, you know, like a little boy, you may be curious and you may want to have sex with you know, you may want to get birth control pills. And, and that's oh, yeah, what no. parents did. You know what I'm saying? They took you to the doctor. The doctor explained to you, yeah. you know, all the risk. And, okay, we can put you on birth control pill. And we can, here's condoms and stuff like that. Yeah. So I'm thinking that I'm doing the next step. You know what I'm saying? We've already had the birds and bees talk, you know, to the best. You yeah. know, you weren't really asking me a whole bunch of questions about sex back then. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I'm like, okay, well, let's go to the doctor. And she can explain, you know, help us out. So... I was just like, is she, you know, is she okay? You know, is everything okay? And she was like, yeah, she's fine. She was, and she was just like, yeah, she's, you know. So I was just like, okay, cool. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, just hoping that at, at that point, you know. But, I mean, it's 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 weird. It's uncomfortable. And, you know, and, and no matter how many times, even now probably, no matter how much time, many, how often I say, hey, you can come to me and talk to me about anything, there's still going to be things that you're going to be like. I don't know if I want to talk to my mom about yeah. this. Day. You know what I'm saying? Even though the door is open and you can, 
Yeah. It's just like you, you some some things you just gotta, you know, wait till you're ready. And you'll do that. And I'll say that. You yeah, I will say that. You will certain times you'll come and you'll be like, Okay, I wanna ask her this. I wanna show her this. I wanna present this knowledge to her that she didn't know and I wanna explain this to her. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I can appreciate that. But yeah. um yeah, but you know, the the shame I think the shame surrounding losing your virginity, honestly, I just think that goes back to how people are raised. And I just think that it's what. That's what I was trying to tell you. That's what I was trying to tell you. So the reason there's this book, it's called like When Woman Was God Mm -hmm. or something. I can't remember exactly, but I haven't read it yet. I see Uh it on TikTok. And this lady was basically saying like this book is about life before the patriarchy, Mm. like how ancient civilizations revolved around matriarchies and how certain structures came to be in our society that we think is normal, Mm. but it's not. It came about because of patriarchy Mm -hmm. and virginity and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. of course, is a lot of it, but there was, this is the part that I'm trying to say is, basically back then, they weren't able to tell whose child was whose. Like, of course we know that this woman birthed Birthed this child, Mm -hmm. so we know who the mom is, Mm -hmm. but the dad could have been a number of, of different mm. men and, and no one was bugging about it like all right it, it takes a village to raise a family like right. after, there were so many uh polyamorous societies yeah. back then who just you know loved love and everyone was a family everyone was a collective right. but anyway um they took that shit and basically was like okay so we don't want it we don't want things to be inherited from mother to child we want them to be inherited from father to son therefore women should only be able to engage in sex and get pregnant in marriages and therefore even Mm. though we don't have the technology enough to how we do now like Mm. dna tests and things like that marriage will all of a sudden be some kind of solidifying factor Mm. to say that this child is the child of, of this father. man, you know? Mm. So, wow. yeah, a lot of the shame has to revolve around white patriarchy yeah. and the, what they've instilled within us. And, of yeah. course, like that slavery sh- slavery and, and Christianity yeah. and just so many different elements of that have so like so much shame within them. The other day I asked my Instagram, I said, why is sex seen as dirty? Mm. And then everybody was like, it's because of white men. It's Mm. because of history. It's because of Christianity. It's because people took something so beautiful and And open and honest. And they, they literally the porn in the United States is completely different from the porn in other parts of the world. I was just talking about this Mm. yesterday with Jonathan. Mm. And I was just saying like, there's this website, it's called, checks i think Mm c-h-e-e-x and i mentioned them in the last episode but still not sponsored (laughs) Mm -hmm. um will be soon but anyway (laughs) there it's like a ethical like porn company and i like to say erotica rather than porn so it's like this um website that you have to get a membership to and it's different creators on there and they all create their own kind of content and a lot of them are from other parts of the world so Mm. like germany uh zimbabwe like the united kingdom different things like that and Every single sex video I've seen has given me a whole new perspective on what sex is, mm. which is why I asked the question, like, yet to, to Jonathan and uh, Dee the other day, I was like, we, why is penetration seen as this is now sex? Like, it is mm. not sex. We could do everything else but penetration and it won't we didn't have sex and it's just like well what are you what are you to say to to lesbian relationships like they have sex and it don't necessarily have to involve Mm. penetration and i was asking them i said is foreplay sex or is it a part of sex and they were like it's a part of sex i'm like no foreplay is sex what is the definition of sex though uh sex when you google it sex talks about uh the general the genitalia of a species that that is sex but like sexual intercourse oh oh i got it so sex itself okay that makes sense that makes sense so sex itself is just your sex your vagina your penis basically it just says sexual activity uh, including specifically sexual intercourse <laughs> which sexual activity. is literally like the cat in the hat and the hat is on the cat like that's what that sounds like <laughs> uh, okay, either either of the two main characters male and female 
into which humans and most other living things are divided on based based upon their reproductive function. Okay, so that's like the ge- gender okay. version of it. Intercourse itself, it says a uh, sexual contact between individuals involving penetration. Got it. Especially the insertion of a man's erect penis into a woman's vagina, typically accumulating uh, an orgasm. Okay. Like that. Okay, so that's, so that's sexual intercourse. So sex and sexual intercourse are two different things. So I guess when when we talk about sex, we have to be a little bit more aware. Specific. I think I think everything I think everything just needs to have an open eye, open open arms and open eyes because mm-hmm. me and AB were talking about this yesterday, mm-hmm. and she was saying like the way that like say you are racist, mm-hmm. the way that you like a white person would, who is racist would look at a black person. It's like we had we as a society just struggle with always wanting to categorize things and put things in a box yeah. and say that it is this and it is not this or vice versa. So that is our main problem with the world today. We just constantly want to label and box things up. Yeah. So when it comes to sex, we that's the last thing that we should be doing like th- th- and that's the point that i'm trying to make when it comes to these ethical uh erotica companies because the uh sex that was in a lot of the videos it was just like a lot of what of what i was watching didn't even involve penetration it was just like this woman and her partner were just like fondling each other like um you know being intimate yeah. that and that's what sex is when everything is said and done but um, we just kind of want to always categorize shit you a white person looks at a black person and they just see stereotypes and just things that limit it, limit this person this being and therefore you can't see everything else that they really are so it's just like it's doing nobody but us a disservice (laughs) you know when everything is said and done so we when it comes to sex we have to understand that sex is more than just right like it's 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 everything in between everything before everything after everything during yeah and yeah that's always been my main thing about it because Uh, I don't, you know, penetration is cool, but it's just like there's so much more right. than just penetration. Right. Oh God. What is that? Oh, let's do it. What kind of sex do you think I have? <laughs> Bruh. <laughs> not, I'm not, I don't I, I can't even Imagine you having sex. I don't even want to think about my daughter having even though I know you do. I don't want to think about Trinity having sex. I mean, what parent wanna do that? Heck no. Oh my god, no, I don't want to no. Okay. Uh, that's I'm <laughs> screaming. It's funny because even when I when she found out I had my first kiss, she was like, I don't wanna hear it. Uh, like, uh, I don't wanna hear about it. No, I don't wanna do it. I'll tell you what kind of sex. I think I, you have I, very vanilla sex, Ma. You think I have very vanilla sex? Very vanilla sex, yes. And maybe you don't, but that's just my perception of the sex. No You're comment. a Libra. Like, I mean, not to say that Libras have <laughs> vanilla sex, right. but like. We know. You we, just don't, you don't, I mean, you have a I, I don't seem rising. exciting or anything. No, like no, be, no, no, no. Not saying that. I'm just saying like with the men that you've engaged with, the only person that I can see anything exciting coming from is either my father or like. <laughs> like, but that uh, Jackson's father and the questionable nigga before that, before <laughs> like, no, like, and even I'm saying on a whim, like, I no, you, even, you're right, though. He will probably be the hey, wait, 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 what's his sign? Isn't he a, he's a Pisces? Oh, he's a Pisces. Oh, yeah, yeah. that sex was vanilla. No, <laughs> <laughs> let me stop. Pisces, Pisces Not are true. kinky, Pisces are kinky, but kinky, I feel like they're yeah. kinky with certain like limits. They're not gonna go all the way. Okay, well, I'm not gonna say that was the case. Oh, but I, you know, prove me wrong. I think that goes into the vibes that the people like me and always vibed on a different level. Like, I mean, you know, the reality is, is that, like, you know, I had, I had my very first love. And then I would say the next guy that I really love was. Okay. So 
me and him were just y'all probably more comfortable we with were each more com- other. Oh, yeah. we were more comfortable we were just more compatible did so y'all ever go to like any sex clubs it's funny that you said that because i actually told him that i wanted to one day uh-huh. but then i'm also a jealous person so i was like wait you I gotta don't know. have sex with i know him. i know and i know you don't have to but i was also like wait if we go and somebody pull you to the side I might have a problem with okay. that. You know what I'm saying? Not yeah. that you would do anything, but yeah. I don't know. But I did want to yeah. walk on the wild side and do that with him. He was the only person I yeah. felt comfortable enough doing that with. So <laughs> Yeah, y'all should have uh, tried that out. You know, hey, maybe in another of... lifetime because, you know, he's not in the picture anymore. You, I but... mean, well, well, with someone else, you can still do that yeah, with. Yeah. That'd be cool. Yeah. So. There's some in Atlanta. They're, I know. They're, yeah. yeah. Tokyo Valentino was the only one that I've been to, and that... That I I think you would like more of a club scene. Uh, yeah, and that's what I yeah. was thinking. I was thinking of like you know a club vibe where you know people are dressed you know sexy yeah. and you know a lot drinks of them, are flowing and the them music have dress codes. is on, yeah the music yeah. is on point and you know if you wanted a room here or there you can have yeah. your room if somebody want to peek through you can yeah. I was thinking something like that and you know he was game for it we just never got around to doing it so got you but um so but that's funny vanilla you I I mean I don't know what vanilla was definitely vanilla yeah okay we're but the next one. yeah um no but i don't you said what kind of sex do i think you have oh, i oh, think if you want to answer it i now. mean clearly my daughter is a lot more you know in touch with her feminine sexuality than i am um or i was definitely at her age i mean yeah <laughs> I, I probably was like your age i probably was like your age by the time I had a, my, an orgasm. Oh, no. Yeah, it was. My father didn't no, do. No. He didn't deliver the no, big O. No, he didn't. Um, he seems actually, like he I wouldn't. probably. Actually, I probably was older than you before I had an wait, orgasm. Wait, wait, wait. But you were you were doing it yourself, right? You were able right. To I had to. Yeah, I had to, you know, as I to, got to older. Make I had to make up for what these it. niggas lacked. <laughs> yeah. Right. I definitely didn't have. I didn't even know what an orgasm was until I became older. And then I. I. I think I made it happen the first time. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, this is, you know. what? So, you know, that was for me as I got older. You're a lot younger than me. Um, and you're more in touch, with, in tune with yourself. Um, so I definitely don't think you have vanilla sex like you said oh, about yeah. me. Yeah. Um, again, I don't want to think about my daughter having sex. But I think she has a very, you know, fun sex Fruitful life when she sex has life. sex. <laughs> She's very in touch with her yoni and... <laughs> And she treats her, you know, her oh her girl nicely. Her so girl. I'm pretty sure, you know, she has very, you know, fun sex. Okay. I don't want to imagine her Jesus Christ. in the bed Jesus with nobody. Christ. <laughs> that's the only question that's like, here, pick, a, pick another one. Oh, your first time masturbating. <laughs> uh, I think I was a teenager. And I didn't know what I was doing. Like, you know, back then, you, it's so funny, but remember, you probably don't remember this. But when I was a kid and you met a little boy that you liked, we used to call it hunching. Okay. That was when you dry had your humping. clothes. Yeah, dry. Yeah, I call it dry humping now. Hunching. So I think, I don't know. I think I was like in, I don't know. I probably was like in hunching. That's eighth funny. grade. And I was like hunching, and I was like, "Oh, this feels kind of good on a guy." Yeah, oh, okay. and then, but that led me to okay touching myself. Okay, but I I couldn't. It, I just felt so weird with my own hands. I always felt like oh. I needed to be like rubbing on something because that's the only time it felt good. It's just weird. Uh-huh. Um, so you get a pillow. Okay, <laughs> you know what I'm saying, and then. Yes, but I was a kid. You were just like dry humping. It was like dry humping. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. I didn't, I didn't really, really like masturbate and like actually start making myself, you know, um, have an orgasm until oh my god, I was like in my thirties. Yeah, yeah. Like in my twenties, it was like okay, let me, you know, explore. You know what I'm saying? Of course, I'm not had a kid at this point, so I'm active, but. Um, really touching myself and really like not thinking that there was something wrong with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, oh okay, yeah. Well, there's, there's that yeah. Because when you too. feel like yeah, you shouldn't be doing that, yeah. you also can't do it for a long time. It's like oh, okay, this didn't work. Let me wash my hands. I'm God. Like, yeah. God's looking at me. You know. <laughs> yeah. No, I was I was probably in my early 30s by the time I like actually. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. Really masturbated. Got you. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Well, yeah. My first time masturbating was very interesting. I was introduced to porn at too young of an age. So how? Oh. God. Yeah, I wasn't. I was introduced to porn to at a yeah at an age that I would have definitely not have known about it. But when I was twelve, um, I think I had an iPod. Pretty sure yeah. I had an iPod. Mm-hmm. Um, I had found porn and I was just, I would just look at it. Like I wouldn't like do anything about it, but like, I would just look at it. Mm-hmm. And then I remember one day asking myself, I wonder why the women do make that reaction when they put something vibrating down there. Mm-hmm. So that was when I got my face massager wow. and I tried it for the first time and my fucking soul levitated out of my <laughs> body. Wait, you actually did have an orgasm? I mean, yeah, I mean, I'm pretty wow. sure. I mean, it was a vibrator, so and it's yeah. just like I had never touched down there myself. Um, yeah, I never really learned. I didn't, the thing with me is I didn't learn how to use my fingers yeah. until I was like 20. Got it. So I had, you know, access so, to that. And, yeah. and yeah, I was like, my, yeah, my whole... <laughs> I was like, what? Uh, uh, uh. I remember. Man, I remember. This. And this is, see, this is another question. When was the first time you remember experiencing sexual shame? And this is my answer. When she fucking walked in on me midday, <laughs> masturbating, <laughs> legs in butterfly position under the covers. With your face and, massager. And you ripped, oh. you, you walked in, you said, what are you doing? And then you were like, and you just walked up to me. You just ripped the covers off. And, Tizzy, what are you doing? Like That's all I fucking remember. And you didn't say anything. You just kept stuttering and yelling. And then you backed out of the room and you slammed the door and ran away. And that was the, wor- that was the worst thing she could have possibly done. Because I'm like, what does this mean? Like, what does that mean? Like, am I not supposed to be doing this? Like, <laughs> this is shame at its finest. But you know what? You know what? I uh, Clearly, I was, like, shocked that you were even doing it. And it's almost like, well, why didn't you come and ask me? Ask you what? Exactly. <laughs> that goes back to, like, I was saying, there's just some you didn't, and, and, and look, that's a part of the sex talk I didn't get. You didn't yeah. tell me about masturbating. Right. You're right. We you did. Know? You're right. It wasn't a very in-depth conversation. It wasn't informative. But I was like... Oh man, she could have asked me, and I could have. That was your reaction. I could have asked you. That's what I was thinking. That's yeah, what you were I was, about. that's why I kind of like, like it ain't like I took your thing away. It was like, don't do that again. Yeah. I was just, I just left, and I was just like, I yes, think you one, did. You did eventually tell I didn't me. Take it. No, you didn't take it, but one time you found it under the bed and you were like, that's not what it's for. Don't do this. Yeah, you shouldn't yeah. be doing this. And then I'm like, because I was like, that's not what it's for. <laughs> It was, Man, that shit was a vibe. I mean, it was, I used it for what it was used for. My it, face. I look. There was three different little pieces to put I, on the I, I the top. That, yeah. So you could. I had one for my face yeah. and then one for oh my, my clitoris. I, I was thinking, bruh, that is not what that's for. That's you know, so that's for, that's for your face. And I'm thinking, you going from your face to your cooch okay, with now the that's same. Understandable. So didn't... all of that stuff is going through my head. So I think when I saw you doing it again, I was like, bruh, that is not what that's for. Almost like I would have wish you would have been like. Can you just take me to the store and buy me one? Because I really enjoy this. But how awkward is that, though? No, man, I wish you would have. I wish. Shit, I would have preferred that had been an option. I wasn't aware that that was an option. Well, you didn't. You didn't ask. Why would I ask? I'm 12. Why would I I ask you? Hey, can you take me to a sex shop at 12 years old to pick out a vibrator? Or give me some other kind of of No, I, I feel like now knowing, I mean, knowing you, you probably would have you would have been like, this is an interesting conversation right. that we're having. <laughs> let me call up my girls. Like, let me call up all nine of your aunts <laughs> that are actually my best friends, and let's go fucking dildo shopping you know together. I, like, I probably would. I would have probably called uh, Auntie Jennifer. I definitely would have told Jennifer because we probably would, and I probably would have told Sharon, and I probably would, yeah, I probably would have told them too because they would have been like, hmm. Okay, yeah, let's go. You, they probably would have been on board. Yeah. Like, let's go. If she wanted, if she's doing it, hey, I know what they would have said. Better her doing it with the vibrator than her doing it with yeah. a, a dude. You yeah. know, so we probably really would have. Man, you know, if you would have enjoyed that. Yeah. I didn't know it was a safe space, though, because you just yeah, freaked out. I, did. I didn't know how to perceive yeah. that. I mean, it was new for me and you. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, my God. I never, I, you know, and it's funny because I was, 
I wasn't a. That's how I had my first orgasm with the book with the toy. It was like okay. called a silver bullet. The one that Nana found in your tampon. Yeah. yeah. Just- <laughs> and, but I was grown. I was old. I was like 20 some years old. And I think I had a party and somebody okay. was selling them at the party. Um, yeah, I was like in my late 20s and she was selling them. And I was like, oh, what do these do? I had never had a vibrator ever in my life. Uh-huh. I'm 20 something. And, um, and she sold me one and I, I had it. So that's how I found it. A side note, that's how I found it. But I would have, um, you're right. It would have been, you know, what I'm that's that probably was around the time that you was using the face, your face more, your face thing. As your vibrator, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. when I had when I bought mine for the yeah, first time, and, yeah. uh, so it was it really was new to both of us. So like I didn't you know I didn't know, but like if you would have honestly, if you would have asked me, yeah, you're right. If, once we got over the shock factor, yeah, I probably would have been like, okay, if you really want one, you know, what yeah, I'm saying? I definitely would have liked to have had that conversation because yeah. it would have allowed me to feel more, more comfortable, comfortable yeah. to have other kind of kinds conversations. of conversations yeah. that we didn't have. Yeah. So I don't know. Think about that with Jackson or something, you know? Yeah. Cause, yeah. Well, that heals a, a aspect of my inner child now, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> what was your first time experiencing sexual shame? I already answered that question. Oh, okay. I just answered it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That one yeah. with the... with the um. Oh, that was it? Well, I, well, I was oh, asking, you're asking me. you. Okay. Um... Ooh. When you say yeah, shame it. I mean, I I guess it just happened often because you just we were just always taught that you know you wait. Okay. So the I nobody ever was like no people were like you shouldn't be having sex. I mean you okay. know all the adults around me was like. You shouldn't oh, be having sex Especially when you got married. pregnant with me. Yeah. yeah. When I got pregnant with you, you know, actually, the, fun, the crazy thing is that when I got pregnant with you, like, nobody even really talked about the sex part at that point. At that point, it was just like, you finna here to be a single teenage mom. You know what I'm saying? It was more shame around that. Even though, don't get me wrong, I had support. We had support. Like, yeah, I don't want, I'm not going to sugarcoat it like we didn't have fan. But, yes, the women were like, they had all got pregnant early. So it was, yeah. It was like a a shame around that, like, oh man, we, you know, we wanted you to wait more so. But y'all didn't talk about it. And I was the oh, I, I was. Uh, it's like we and you had a, spent your whole life raising your brothers, like pretty yeah. Much, like, and and it was just like you know, I yeah. When it when it happened, it was just like it is what it is. I hell, at least I graduated high school by the time I, everybody else was still in high school when they got pregnant. So I'm thinking I'm doing pretty good. I got out of high school. Yeah. I'm, I'm in college. Yeah. Oh. Um. So uh, it was more that it wasn't necessarily shame around the sex part because once it, my mama knew I was having sex, it was just like okay, it, you know, it is what it is. Um. So we just knew it was something you wait. You were supposed to, you were supposed to wait till you got married to have sex. That was what we were taught. That's what we tried to live up to. And for everybody, it did not happen at all. And <laughs> clearly that needs to be revisited so that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, people can understand it. Like you're asking me from a, a place of, I don't know, school me, educate me on these things so that I can be prepared to take whatever route I want to take as I get older. You know what I'm saying? Not so that I'm so shameful around it. Because we were just like, you don't have sex. That was it. You know? So yeah. when I did, it was like, oh, Lord, I got to tell my mom I had sex. Yeah. And like I said, I still lied. <laughs> Until like, I got yeah, pregnant. Yeah, so it's it like now like, the first time she's finding out about you ever having sex, you're pregnant. I'm pregnant, right. I'm in college. Yeah, first year in college. Yeah. I'm down there. I'm knocked up. And I'm calling her. And I'm just like, you got to be a grandma. And even though everybody was happy, you yeah. know, everybody was happy. You know, everybody adores you. Um, still do, but you know, it was like, yeah, yeah. Darn. So, you know, interesting is is what it is. Last question. Last question. All right. What aspects of you and Nana's relationship do you not want to play out between me and you? Huh. Of me and that's Nana. an interesting one. That is an interesting one. Um, it's interesting too because I've already seen so many things not play out yeah, between but, me and you yeah. that have played out with mama. Um, hmm. 
I feel like that's a question for both of us to answer. Yeah. Y'all just don't talk about what's some... important. Yeah. You know, I think we do a lot more now. Okay. I will say that. Now that I'm an adult, you know, because I come from the school school of you don't disrespect your parents you, yeah. you're not gonna talk crazy to them you're not gonna disrespect them it you know it that's what it is that's how i grew up you know what i'm saying and um that's just what it was you know so i did not do it but trust there were times i wanted to get about it when i now but you know i wasn't gonna do that because that wasn't how i raised now that i'm an adult i, I can articulate myself a lot more so when there's things that bother me with nana I can go to her and I can talk to her in in a way that she can understand it and we can have a conversation about it. It's hard, especially when it goes back to we start talking about stuff from the past. Um, it is hard. It is challenging, but it we can do that now. Luckily, we can do that now. Um, you are still young, so I do want to. I want to have that dynamic with you, where you feel like. It's still gonna be uncomfortable sometimes because I am your mom, but I still want you to. I want you to feel comfortable to talk to me about the hard things. And a lot of times we don't do that. You know what I'm saying? So um, that's something that I don't want to happen. You know, because I think I was in my 30s. Damn, in my 30s before I started really telling my mama how I felt about certain things. Yeah. You know, you're early 20s. I don't want you to be in your 30s before you start letting me have and it either. Yeah, and it ain't, yeah. That ain't how <laughs> yeah. And you've been letting me have it, you know what I'm saying, yeah. recently. And I'm just like, geez, I just got to take a step back and, you know, absorb this knowledge, absorb this information, respect where she's coming from, you know what I'm saying, and move forward so that we don't have blockages in our relationship. Yeah, because I don't like having i don't like having that in the air yeah like yeah i kind of just it just feels weird it feels weird it's it uncomfortable weird. yeah and i can't imagine like because be and i think a lot of that is due to the fact that i prioritize my healing mm -hmm. so it's just like yeah. i'm not trying to delay this shit yeah. much further yeah by not you know communicating something that ha has been painful to me For you. so right yeah. yeah yeah and and i like that i like that i can respect that and that's what i say a lot of times it's like Hey, I'm I'm the mama, but I'm learning from you with a lot of stuff. You know what I'm saying? Which will also help me as I'm raising your little brother. You know what I'm saying? And so um, the things, so that's one of the things that, you know, I definitely want us to always be able to have that open communication and feel comfortable enough to talk to each other, even when things are hard. Um, and they may hurt. You know what I'm saying? Um, another thing is that, you know, sometimes I didn't trust my mom. You know what I'm saying? Like, there was, you know, just things growing up that I was just like, oh, she really, <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Put us in this predicament. Or or I felt like I got psyched out. Like, she'll say, oh, yeah, you could do this. And then when the time came, it was a whole different story. Yeah. And I was just like, bruh, you know what I'm saying? I'm thinking one thing, and then you, you tricking me. So sometimes I felt like I was um, manipulated because we were kids. You know what I'm saying? It's like when one thing mama used to do is when she was younger, she used to be like, uh, we'll be like, where you about to go? And she'd be like, oh, I'm going to see a man about a dog. She used to tell us that all the time. Bro, when I tell you, me and my brothers used to get so excited because we thought we was going to get a dog. Damn. I didn't even know I was allergic to dogs back then. But I always, when that Negro came back home, I'm looking for the dog. I'm looking yeah. for the puppy. And then I think, as I got older, I was like, no. Nigga, what would that's... she say when you would ask her? She would be like, oh, he didn't come. Or, oh, uh, I didn't get she it. No, she kept the She kept yeah, the it, but it would be she just like that. She didn't explain that this is a figure no, of speech. No, no. I didn't find that out until, like, years later. And I was like. That's trauma. <laughs> that's trauma, bruh. I was like, no. Man. You know, and so it, as I got older, I was like, oh, she's telling me that because she don't want us asking her where she going is that she based it's basically saying that's none, that's of, your none of your business, business yeah but like yeah it's a fact, see and i thought that y'all knew that it was a figure of speech no but it took I, a while to know that. that she come back home and you asking her where it's at she's like oh he didn't it didn't it didn't fall through like, yeah no it, yeah it was not just, this time he, right not time. this yeah it would be like that it would be like that and so yeah after that happened a couple of times i was like oh that nigga manipulated us that nigga lied yeah she just didn't want us throwing the field or want us coming with her yeah. or something like that you know what i'm saying so it would be it started off with like little you know small stuffs like that and then you know as we get old got older it was just like other things that we would just notice and then that's when i was like oh yeah okay now i'm being manipulated you know what i'm saying and as a kid 
said, you know, I get sometimes we tell our kids certain stuff because we don't want them to, you know, worry. Or, you know, like if, I, if I'm going on a trip and I'm like, I'm going to be, you know, I'll be back soon. I love you. You know what I'm saying? It's like I don't want, you don't want your kid to worry. But then there's also a thin line where it's like, okay, what am I saying? I'm I'm really making you think one thing and that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's something that I don't want to happen between us. Like, you know what I'm saying? I feel like at this point, like you're older now and like anything I may have done in the past, you, you, you will, you will say it. You like, brought up a lot yeah, of things, so. yeah. You've said it and you'll be like, yeah, I remember when you did that shit. Oh, like even when like, Side note, like I'll be in my room and you be like, You told me y'all was in there wrestling. Nigga, I knew y'all went in there. Wrestling. I didn't know, I didn't know. I forgot about that. I don't know. <laughs> you know, but that was like me manipulating okay, you, me yeah, saying yeah. we were right because I didn't want to come out and be like, Oh, me and my boyfriend are yeah, intimate. Right, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? So those are things that you have definitely called me out on. But you know, even going forward, you know what I'm saying? I don't I don't want that to be the case. And I think um that's very important because they can start off as small things, but they can yeah. become big things if we don't address them, you know, sooner. So if you feel like I'm feeding you shit, I'm giving you, you know, some BS, I want you to be, check me on it. You know what I'm saying? And then I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. No yeah. More. <laughs> so, that's what you mean. so yeah, definitely the um, manipulation, definitely um, feeling comfortable enough to talk to me about stuff because there was a lot of things I didn't feel comfortable enough to talk to my, about my mom. Again, not saying I couldn't, I just didn't feel comfortable enough to do so. You know what I'm saying? Um, you know, and I'm, you know, not putting my mom's business out there. But, you know, like, it's okay to not have it together all the time. Yeah. And to not be right all the time. And sometimes I think as parents, we put on the facade that we got it together. You know what I'm saying? All the time. Or we, you know, we doing it. Because we just got to get up and go, go, go and do, do, do. Um, So letting our kids see us be vulnerable, too, is something that I want. Because I never really seen my mom. Like, like I ain't really see her like really cry when I know she yeah. was, you know what I'm saying? In in a place where it's like things could have been, you know, bad or whatever. I never saw her get that emotional. I just saw her get up and go. And so I'm like, so that's what we do, you know what I'm saying? You think that's what you're supposed to do because you're a parent. But as I'm, I got older, I was like, oh, you know what I'm saying? I realized she probably had a lot of moments where she didn't have nobody but herself. You know what I'm saying? That's like, oh, of course, I, we're a lot closer now. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like, no, like, you can be vulnerable. You can, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to have it together all the time. And so, like, you know, yeah. I want, it's important for you to, you know, I think now we have a lot more conversations. I want you to call me out. Like, if you're like, you all right? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you know, check in and, and stuff like that. Because I'm, I'm going to always call you and harass you and be like, you know, what's going on? I hear it in your voice. Are you okay? You know, oh, so on yeah. and so forth. So, um, you know, I want that to be something that, you know, don't play out in our relationships. I want you to be able to, um, you know, ask me about that stuff and check me on that stuff. Um, Got you. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. What about, so what about vice versa? I, I had you already something? told you. Communication. Yeah. Y'all, you and I not don't talk about. Like I know you stuff. you know established boundaries with her and stuff now, yeah. but y'all haven't talked about the past. Yeah, y'all yeah. haven't talked about like a lot of a lot of, of things past. that that have you know bothered a lot of y'all. Yeah. And, it, and it's like you know, and the women in our family are afraid of becoming their mothers. Right. So it's like mm-hmm. that's just the cycle that's played out. Like the only relationship we haven't seen is a uh, grandma's relationship with her mom, right. my great great grandma. But I can guarantee you yeah. that she wasn't peachy keen, especially yeah. after she got pregnant by a black man. Yeah. Like, you know, so it's just like that's just another thing that I've noticed. And it's interesting to watch like Nana really kind of like play out this this dynamic that's like. Like she she couldn't understand like why people you know maybe like she was saying that like no one like takes her out to eat or anything like that except for like you or something yeah and i was just like thinking to myself like basically she was like complaining like she wasn't cared about as much as she would like to be cared about Mm. but i'm like you don't talk to your mom Mm. like why are you like why are you confused y'all have each done the same thing to y'all's daughters as like yeah you didn't want done onto you by your mom the generation of curses like well y'all are y'all are both to blame here like what makes you think that you're not 
your mother in this position. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Yeah, you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I definitely got it. So I I think that, and it's interesting to watch that just not, people not be able to understand that, like, you know, they be the problem. Yeah. Sometimes, so. Yeah. I'm like, and then when, when, when Uncle Mike was able to address it, it was not, it was not received. Yeah, it wasn't received very well. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think, you're right. You're absolutely right. No, I, I mean, you hit the nail right on the head. And I think because, you know, we, we don't, like I said, when mothers, grandmothers are hurting or in their place of pain, they don't talk about it, which also means sometimes they don't seek help for it. Yeah. And so when it plays out like that in their relationships with their daughters, they, they're not connecting the dots. They're yeah. not realizing, oh. This is a mirror. Yeah. I don't have a tight relationship with my mom because... X, Y, Z. You know what I'm saying? Or I don't have a tight relationship with my daughter because I'm not, that's what I meant to say. I don't have a tight relationship with my daughter because I'm not addressing the issues that I have with my mom. Yeah. And if we continue to go like that, it's then not gonna, it's not going to be good. But it's then, like when you can realize, and it's going to come me. out in, unhealthy, <laughs> yeah, it's going to come out in unhealthy ways as well because there's also been some things that like, you know, in the heat of the moment, you know, my mom, I've seen my mom break down and she's blurted some out, and I'm just like, <gasps> like for me, not not like an attack on me, like she's attacking me, but she's blurted out something that she's been holding in with in herself, and to me, her daughter, and I'm like, I never knew that, and then it's like, and then how can I help you process that when I never knew it's a big, and you're telling me in this capacity, you know, like that's hard for me as your daughter to take in, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. versus... If I realize, hey, I got this stuff in me that I need I need to work on, I need to get out, I need to address, let me start seeking help, let me seek therapy, let me get into a support group, let me do this, any other, so that I can address these things. So maybe I can communicate these things with my mom. And you know what I'm saying? And we can, like you said, get to a place where we can even have a conversation. You know, it is unfortunate when I look at um some of the women and on my mom's side and on my dad's side is is uh yeah. you know it's 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 interesting the the relationships but you yeah. know the joy is that you know we do have you you know we do have you know your cousins um you guys are just in like a whole different realm than what we are y'all are like i i love that some people be like oh this generation is so disrespectful and so this any other and don't get me wrong i do believe that there there still need there always needs to be a level of respect when anybody that's when adults talking to kids and when kids talk to adults and teenagers and young adults everybody in between um nobody is better you know what i'm saying than the other one so there needs to be a level of respect just for the human person yeah. Um, but in the, in, in the process, it's like, we need to, we need to listen, you know what I'm saying? We need to listen to people and we need to create spaces for people to feel comfortable talking about things that are hard to talk about, you know what I'm saying? And we need to let people know it's okay to get help for what you need. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna support you in the process. So, yeah, that was good. Um, before we close it out, do you have anything you want to ask me? <sighs> anything let me think if there's something that i've really really been wanting to know you know are you in a relationship with anyone right now no Mm. okay no do you still not want to have kids yeah Yeah. i I don't i don't want i don't want kids (laughs) i don't want want them in a way that i'd have to carry them and raise them Mm. i'd like adopt you would adopt a lot later on okay maybe okay (laughs) Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ooh, okay. I didn't. I didn't know that. Um, why actually would you not want to carry bear them? Key? Yeah. Because like I don't want. I don't. Man, that has always just sounded incredibly painful <laughs> and really not worth it. Like <laughs> that has just. It just no. Like I've seen, and even before I knew about the way that the science the biology behind Mm. being pregnant like it just it just never was appeasing to me like I like the idea of like seeing like a baby version of me like yeah you know like to see my face kind of copied onto but like I don't really also want to deal with like an infant Okay. To like five. Okay. Like I don't really want to be there okay. for that. Like, yeah. Like that just seems like a lot. Like I want them a little like marinated <laughs> first. Like, 
you know season yeah maybe like eight or nine okay seven okay and it doesn't have to be like a kid like it could be like a 14 year old because i know a lot a lot kids get adopted quicker than like teenagers and stuff so like i'd probably be more so like catering towards like the 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 generation that the population of kids in a certain generation that don't get the support. I feel like I said that so much weirder than what it had to be, but you see what I'm saying? <laughs> what the saying. age group, the age group pretty that much. normally don't get adopted is yeah. the one that you would cater to. If yeah, you did. yeah. Okay, I get a mix, but yeah, yeah. It wouldn't be like a. I mean, it would definitely be a family dynamic, but it would be like more of a community dynamic. Like it wouldn't be like I'd be their mom, yeah. but I would also be like their best friend right. and like their mentor right. and shit like that. So okay, yeah. I could totally see that. I can yeah. totally see that. Okay, yeah. okay. But I'm not in a relationship. I, if if I was, I feel like people would know a little bit more. Like I would definitely tease it. <laughs> yeah, you would tease it because I and like, I get excited about stuff like that. Like okay. even the last person I was talking to, I told you about yeah, that. So yeah. Yeah. I haven't talked to anybody since that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um let me see what else I want to know. Are you how do you feel about this next phase of your life? So you just turned twenty two. No, that's not what I want to ask you first. First I want to ask you where do you see yourself in three years? Three years, mm-hmm. I'll be twenty-five. Mm-hmm. Um, probably winning a, probably winning a third Grammy or something like that. Like, definitely doing something in film, mm-hmm. or more so, I see, I see myself like watching what I've done <laughs> mm. being published or shown somewhere receiving things from the work that i did got it between the ages of 20 and 24 like okay. does that make sense yeah like seeing the fruits but, of your labor yeah, play out in front of you yeah because i want to there's a lot of different creative things that i want to do, do and that's another aspect of why i'm really about to leave the country because mm-hmm. i really want to be by myself you do so okay. like i really want to be by myself really away from the matrix and really able to just like nurture whatever parts of it uh, of me that i have kind of been pushing off because like oh writing music right now doesn't really give me money so Mm. i need to do whatever is making me money. like really just allow myself to lose my mind in a sense because i was saying recently that i know i'm about to leave the country and really like detach from absolutely everything and Mm. an aspect of me is scared because i know that i'm not gonna be the same person that i am now Mm. and because of that I was like, well, what if I don't end up where I want to end up? But I know I'm going to end up exactly where it is that I want to, yeah, mm-hmm. end up. So, yeah. <laughs> You're making me get teary eyes. So, it's interesting that you said that because I, I remember the trip you took to um, Panama. Yeah. And I remember sitting in the car. I remember you said, you know, I do this thing. I, I, I plan these trips and they'd be very impulsive. And you were so ex- you were so excited, and then we pulled up to the airport, and you were like scared. And I remember sitting there, and I was just like, "We can turn around if you want to turn around," but then I was just like, "But if you want to go, we right here. You know what I'm saying? We'll be here when you get back. You know." And and you went, and you had such an amazing time. I remember you was just like, man, you FaceTime me. And because, and, and, and of course, I'm at home freaking out. Oh, my God, she's in another country by herself. You know, that, why she didn't invite me? You know, I, I would have went. You know what I'm saying? I went, you know, look, I won't, I won't AB there with her. I won't yeah. want her friends with her. Like, I was so scared. And I was, but I was like, when you got there, you was just like, you know, okay, I'm here. You know, this it's is funny it is. because I forgot that I was terrified. You was to terrified go. to get on that plane. Yeah. Yeah. And it, it's like it didn't hit you until we pulled up to the. Or at least yeah. I didn't see it hit you until we pulled up to the. Yeah. And I was like, you know, you're excited, and and then you just you just let it out, and I was just like, wow, you know, I I was able to see your vulnerable side because you were always you're always like you know i'm ready to go i'm ready to go i'm ready to do something different but it was like i got to see that side of you that was just like you know but i'm also scared you know which which makes sense which is okay and it was just like it's okay you gonna be all right like i felt it in my heart like i always feel i always feel in my heart like i know 
what's going on with you even when we don't talk you know what i'm saying so i was just like you're gonna be okay you're gonna get over there you're gonna have fun you know what i'm saying but if you don't want to go you you can stay yeah. but you know you're gonna have fun it's gonna be enjoyable you when you had a good time and so i applaud that and a lot of people in the family are like trying to go out the country again you know and i was like yeah she want to travel she want to get away you know what i'm saying and everybody's like why you know people are like really like impressed with the fact that you know you don't have a problem with staying put for a year but then you're also like no i want to do that like i look up that like i admire that about you you know what i'm saying so i'm glad that you are embarking on that journey and that's what you want to do but no you always got home you know what i'm saying you always got family you always got support um <laughs> jesus <laughs> and it's 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 very impressive for me to see you take those chances because i wouldn't have did that <laughs> you know what i'm saying like even now i probably would be like okay i'm going somewhere but i ain't going all the way over there you know what i'm saying but to see you be so carefree and so willing to step out there on faith and do something different I love that. I love that. I'm I'm happy for you and your ability to do that and, and your desire to want to do that. You know what I'm saying? And you just you you're figuring your life out and I'm just happy to be here for the ride. <laughs> you know, I really am. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, now I, I can't tell her what to do. I can't tell her to stay inside. But you know, it's it's nice to be able to be here for the ride and to see you on this journey and taking these steps. So, you know, not to ramble, but you know, I'm I'm happy for you and I know you're gonna be okay. So, love you. Okay, love you too. <laughs> and on that note, <laughs> um, thank y'all for watching and listening and tuning in. And let me know what you think about the podcast episode. <laughs> uh, DM me on Instagram or, oh, <laughs> DM me on Instagram or, yeah, if you're watching the live version, leave your comment down below. But other than that, um, comment like subscribe same as always you guys will hear me in the next episode this is bye <laughs> love you baby love you too